Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Live with Naz. An hour of laughter and encouragement coming to you from Corona, California, rainy Corona, California. It's been raining all day on and off, so it's good to see all of you and to spend this hour making you laugh and also encouraging you and talking about life. That's that's what's important, right? Right, Naz. Okay, well, I hope you had a a good weekend, a great weekend. I was in with you on Friday, and then I was in Saturday, Sunday, and welcome to this new week, Monday. Okay, let's see, let's bring our friends from the other side with us, and then see who's joining us tonight. Okay, here we go. All right, come on, people from the other side, join me. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Come on, come on, people. Come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's get those people with us. <laughs> here we go. Come on. Come on, people. Okay, share. Yes. Alrighty. Let's see who is joining us tonight. Okay. We have a little challenge. Not a challenge, but... Okay, give me one second. Let me do this. Let's see. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Come on. Facebook wasn't being helpful today with me, so... Okay, still not being helpful. One second. Alrighty, welcome back, let's see who is joining, Sarah how are you, without even looking I'm going to assume Sarah is here of course, and then hello Catherine Allen, hello Becky Ottenberry, and uh, how was my weekend, let's see, I didn't have any shows this weekend, so I spent it with my wife and I cleaned the studio and the office, and uh, spend a little time with my daughter, and uh, what else? What else did we do? Shoot, it's been the weekend already, I forgot what we did. Well, yesterday, let's see, walk Delilah, listen to a sermon and commentaries, and then went down to the beach with Delilah and Maha and Tally and my niece, and then we went home and saw the Oscars. It's interesting. I normally don't watch the Oscars. I haven't watched it for a while, but I did. And special request, request for this date. Okay, we will. Sarah, come on. I just want to remind you to keep praying for Bobby Miller. He lost his mom over the weekend. So keep him in prayer and his sister. Rochelle, how are you? Timothy Vakhuri, Michael Ramirez, hello, hello, hello. Really slow internet for me, I'm sorry. Okay, let's see. Who else is... Dolores, how are you? From Louisiana. Matthew Dirks from Roller Coaster, Wisconsin. Uh, breathe, breathe. Naz will be back. It's only a beauty break. Yes. Naz, you need bodyguard when on stage. <laughs> Watch my Instagram and Facebook from today. I feel like I'm sort of a Walmart greeter at this show. You... You are. Put your vest on. Mark Mund, welcome back. All righty. So, I was watching the Oscars, like some of you, me and my son and his friend who's staying with us for a few days, so the, also a movie director. So, of course, you're watching the Oscars with two movie directors is just a whole different 
it's like watching, you know, a forensic files with two agents, you know, <laughs> a CIA agent or FBI agent. That's that's the thing. So, but what happened, of course, you know, it's funny how our world is becoming more like our social media, like the news. Okay. Uh, oh, my Lord. It's it's Russia and Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine. Oh, my Lord. There's a war. A third war is coming. Oh, Putin's going to do this. Oh, oh, gas prices are up. Gas prices are up. Can you believe it? $6.25 a gallon. $6.50 a gallon. Can you believe that? Oh, gas prices are up. What about the Ukraine? Gas prices are up. Look, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Will Smith, what about the war in the Ukraine? Hey, did you watch Will Smith slap Chris Rock? What about gas prices? Will Smith slap Chris Rock. What's tomorrow? They're going to forget about Will Smith and Chris Rock. It's just like our mind is like a social media. Click, check, 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 check. Okay, next update. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, went well. Praise God. Did you talk about this yet? John's dry bar coming out this week. No, not yet. This week on the 31st, people, John, my son's dry bar is coming out. So thank you for the reminder. Also, tomorrow I will have comedian and Anthony Griffith with this on the show talking about comedy and having MS and being an actor in Hollywood. So anyway, so. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what do you call it? So what happened is uh, the whole thing with uh, Chris Rock and Mike. Number one, uh, I would not accept anyone making fun of my wife or joking about my wife. Number one. But his wife is a celebrity. His wife is in the public eye. His wife is a public figure. And his wife goes publicly and talks about stuff. So what the comedian was commenting about his wife as a as a performer as an artist as an actress as a celebrity a famous celebrity he wasn't talking about his wife who is behind the scenes not justifiable of course i would be very upset but then again, again you don't go and you hit a comedian on stage the there's no justification for it wait till the guy is off stage and talk to him but to do that, that's not acceptable, even though I am almost at the end of the autobiography of uh, Will Smith. It's called Will. 17 hours of Audible I'm listening to. I kind of relate to the guy at certain levels of his career and his life. I could relate to him. I kind of you make you like him. He's a, he's a master at justifying things. I hope you noticed that last night. If you watch the Oscars with his speech... In his acceptance speech, he justified what he did, which is not acceptable. Now, a few years ago, I was doing a concert, outdoors concert, with a, with a famous Christian band. I forgot who they are, it's Lee, uh, a guy and his wife. But anyway, so they performed, then I was headlining the show, and then... There were two security guards right in the front. And if you see the video on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok from today, you'll notice. There were two security guards right in front, in front of the stage. And this guy walks up, walks up the steps and comes on stage. And I didn't know what to expect, but he opened his arm to hug me. So I gave him a hug and I talked to him for a little while. And then they pulled him out of off stage. He's just like, okay, let's go. So it's it's not fun when someone walks up on stage. That's not the plan for a comedian. You go up and you do your comedy and if someone doesn't like it, it's all comedy. It's there's no malice in it. And I don't think Chris Rock had any malice when he made the joke. He didn't have any malice. And that just shows you how a sensitive world we are in. And I don't know if uh, Will Smith kind of because of the movie he was trying to promote of being protective i don't know what it is i don't know i'm i'm if if chris rock was not a comedian who was just a guy saying making comments and against someone's you know against uh, will smith's wife 
I don't know. What is your thought? What I want to hear your thought on it. Why is this a big deal? I normally don't get involved in worldly stuff, but why is it a big deal? Because there's a comedian involved. And by the way, I like Chris Rock's comedy. I'm not, even though I don't like his language, like his comedy, his the way he works, his comedy. I watched the trailer. So good. Oh, thank you. A giant hello to everyone. Hello, Terry. From South Washington, welcome. Dry bar is coming out. Yes. Who's Oscar? Oscar Meyer. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Ned, do you believe in slapstick comedy? Yes. What's up? My doctor prescribed me back pain. Get back physical. T- we'll be praying for you at the end of the show. I personally thought Chris's joke was completely okay. Yeah. There was no malice in it at all. He, there was no malice. In your clip or someone coming... Because stage, you handle it as a true professional. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, honestly, what my eyes were looking at his hands. And that's what you do when someone coming at you on stage or anywhere. You look if they're holding a knife, a gun. What's, what's in their hand? Is their hand pinched? Are they relaxed? The guy was drunk, kind of, a little bit. But he was a Marine, so I give him the respect he deserves. It was all staged. I doubt it. I don't think it was all staged. I thought it was. For the beginning, we thought it was, but it's not staged because it's going to hurt Will Smith's career. It will. Felt over his slap was overcompensation for, I don't know, who knows what people are thinking. Okay. I want to hear your comments. There's 92 people here. I know normally we start with comedy and top 20. We're not doing top 20 because Facebook didn't want to give me any comments from last show. So, hey. (laughs) Uh, So, give me your comments. What do you think? What do you think of that? Where do you stand? I want to hear you guys because you're my, my community, my family. Here's Rochelle. Rochelle said, I personally think we'll need Jesus. Even though he claimed Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and from reading his biography, uh, his grandma was a solid, solid, solid Christian. And he's always have to, really, when she calls him and asks him, what are you doing? He has to explain to her what he's doing. But she took him to church and all that. And he claimed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He claimed he was a Christian. But to say that F word publicly and to have a life... He said, I have an open marriage and stuff like that. Ah, I don't know. I'm not judging, but come on. You're known by your fruits, people. You know, we're not judging. We're just like Greg Laurie said. We're inspect fruit inspectors. Ah, Jesus doesn't like what we all we do and probably doesn't know him. Who knows what this personal internal life was really like. He has an open marriage. You're right. His kids have struggled and seem to lack direction and convention, uh, conviction from what uh, little I know. He's a wealthy actor, which might make him feel a bit invincible and entitled. Well, we'll find out what happens after this. Uh, Michelle said, well, it wasn't the first joke of the night about them, and he had a breaking point, and fortunately it was on such a public setting. He did publicly apologize to Chris today. He had to, after he found out that this going to cost him, not before. He could have apologized when he went to receive the award. He did not. He, did, he justified it. He justified it. He should have apologized, but he didn't. But, but when the academy condemned it, he goes, ooh, I'm going to lose some work. And uh, he publicly apologized. He laughed at first. Yeah, he, he was laughing. And then looked at his wife. His left and his expression totally changed, but I don't think his reaction was called for. But again, to whom, what really made him do that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if I see my wife is upset at something, I want to react. But when you know the person who did it has no malice, was just jokingly, it was an old, and that his wife is a public figure, a celebrity who has to handle it. When you're a celebrity, you have to take all the criti- criticism you're going to get. And that, you know, the Oscars rating is down this year. Really? I thought last year it was. That's why they brought all these new people, all these big, big shots, you know, to be on the show just to make it up. Ned Wilson is, is a Scientologist. I didn't know that. But he claimed in his book, Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. 
They all need to grow red. That's super interesting that I didn't really know that. Him knowing Jesus in his past, but living his life more in a flesh. Yes, yes, yes. When I've been walking in my flesh, I for sure had more outbursts than when I'm walking the straight and narrow. I'm glad you are on the straight and narrow. I, I don't want you to backslide and slap us all with this. You big truck driver, you. <laughs> a lot of Christians swear. Ah, a lot. But those are just words. It is the internet intent of the heart that makes it right or wrong. You know what, Michelle? I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm not judging. There's a lot worse sins. Sin the sin, you know. But uh, I know. I can. There were moments when the flesh kicked in and you say a bad word in private, not in public. And I know... At times I'm guilty. My own kids heard me once say it. And it was, I had, I felt so much shame that I have to, just, I was just defined, but it came out and boom, you can't bring it back. But when someone is that in his language, I mean, that kind of one of the first, okay, why are you saying that? Why are you, why is that language? You know, if you're using the F word, you know, why is that in your vocabulary as a believer? Let's make sure to pray since celebrities live their lives in a f fishbowl and constantly criticize. Yes, let's pray. That's a good attitude. The biggest thing that upset me last night was when my wife confessed she used Google to solve yesterday's reward. Like, <gasps> Are you serious she did that? Mrs. Rossetti? They're just horrible. It's just horrible. You know what, Chris? Let's pray right now for Chris because I know a husband should never has to deal with that. And I'm sure you're in shock right now. And your wife is being worldly, wordle, not worldly. <laughs> Chris, I don't know. I can't say I can relate to this or this happened to me. So I don't know how you're feeling right now and what kind of reaction you're having, but I would say that you pray before you respond to Mrs. Rossetti. I'm sure she was under the influence of winning points, and she just gave up on her faith that she's able to, to solve it without going to Google. Now, I think Michael Ramirez can help her with that. <laughs> Leave Fern 2 alone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'll be praying for you, and I'm sure at the end of the show at 9.23, after the bells of the church, we'll be praying for you. And Mrs. Rosetti, and I'm playing. I think you should seek counseling. As a Christian, I'm saying, you know what? I think you and Mrs. Rosetti, uh, you have to deal with this puzzle, and you have to seek, uh, you have to seek uh, counseling. C-O-U-N-C-E-L-I-N-G. Of course, we are all just spec spec speculating since we don't actually know him. Praying for him is need great, good. I love your attitude, guys. Will was still angry and was not able to apologize at that time to Chris. I think it took him all night to forgive. Will he need, will need prayer? There's a deeper issue here than a joke about a movie. Right. A guy from my high school at Apple Valley High School won an Oscar too. Oh, that's awesome. If you look at the lyrics of his Mr. Nice Guy song, he does have issues. Yes, I'm lost on this conversation because I don't watch those awards. Too busy with my dog's birth. I understand. We normally end don't. It's a slap. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chris. At least Will didn't slap him with a fish. <laughs> I eliminated all foul language from my speech. Good for you, brother. Is Chris okay to Kid Rock? No, he's not related to Kid Rock. With, with God's help, yeah. Plus, today I went... Thank you so much, Amy, for the updates. All right. So with that question, let's hydrate and I'll ask you the first question. Give me a different name for the Oscars. You know, they shouldn't just call them the Oscars. Uh, give me a different name. What would they be called? A different 
name for the Oscars. I mean, I still can't believe what Mrs. Rossetti did. The Oscar Myers, the Rockies, the Wilders, <laughs> the Wilders. This is funny, whenever I wear blue, my face turns red. Oh, and now my brain is showing a little bit. Thank you. Okay, idols, right. <laughs> <laughs> the self-congratulatory feel-good award show. That's good, Sarah. Slappers. <laughs> That's funny, Timothy. The Babylon Awards. Yes. Oscar Mayer. The Babylon had <laughs> uh, John MacArthur slapping Joel Osteen today. The Oscar Myers. The Nobody Cares. That's right, Rochelle. The Don't Waste Your Time show. Slapstick comedy. Did you see that lady that won the Best Actress? What's her name? Christian something. And everybody was so concerned with what happened with Will Smith and stuff. And she started talking about, you know, they all of a sudden when they won an award, they think that they're politician now and they want to become activist and they become and they want to need to uh, to push certain agendas and like what's his name a few couple of years ago the the british comedian uh, the one that who started the office show he said said you know what uh, jarvis yeah well, yeah ricky jarvis he said just shut up take the award and go home that's it stop giving this political or activist or pushing agendas you know just take your gift go home and thank you slap crackle pop <laughs> elite participation trophies right we're so vain show that's good becky both he she they them award right michelle you're never gonna win <laughs> give it up show <laughs> the fake actors and actresses rock him sock him royals royals Oscar Wilde made it up with his name. Oscar Wilders. Oh, that's what they name it? Oscar Wilde. Okay. The Oscar who? Okay. <laughs> We're so vain. The Great Deception. <laughs> right. Uh, comedy Lives Matter. Comedians Lives Matter. The uh, Archaic Academy Awards. The who? <laughs> the who? I made it up. Oh, you did. <laughs> like Dr. Oz is running for Dr. Fauci's job title. Is he? I didn't know that. That would be interesting. But he's not infectious disease physician like Fauci is. But he wants to hit the CDC. Okay. From Google, of course, where Mrs. Rossetti is going behind her husband's back. The Academy officially adopted the name Oscar for the trophies in 1939. However, the origin of the nickname is disputed. One biography of Betty Davis, who was a president of the Academy in 41, claims she named the awards after her first Husband, band leader Harmon Oscar Nelson. Hmm. Distraction for dictatorship awards. <laughs> the let's get this over with so we can eat. <laughs> Different strokes. The nobody cares award. Right. Lost, lost, lost again. All right. Give me a different name for the Oscars. Roll out the red carpet for the We Don't Give a Crap crap show. Or <laughs> you say it, sister. Uh, how it feels to perform in front of empty chairs. 
Overrated show, that's right. Let's pat ourselves on the back awards. It's all about me, not you. <laughs> that is true. Scars due to the fighting. Scars instead of Oscars. <laughs> Scars. Oh, man, that's... All right, let me give you a different question, people. What would... The black and blue carpet, that's funny. Pretty Pretenders pageant. All right, guys, way too much peer pressure awards. Okay, your next question is, what would the 12 apostles have called their music band? Uh, this is, came from Rossetti as well, who is really going through a hard time right now because of Mrs. Rossetti's approach to a world game. I think I should let this one go, huh, Rosetti? <laughs> but that's okay. It's funny. Okay, let's see. Unpin this, and let's pin this. What would the 12 apostles have called their music band? Disciple. Disciple. <laughs> All right. Slap your mama awards. Slap, you mean slap the presenter awards. The pretenders. Where anything can happen awards. The Popcorn Patriots. I should have kept you going. Well, Holy Dozen. Good. All right. Becky Ottenberry. That's funny. Following the leader. Right. The Belish people. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> they are from Belish. World Worship. The Oscars. The 10% Employed Actors Lottery. You're right. Have a great day and awesome week. I got to go. Well, we're praying for you and let praise God for the news. Holy rollers, good. Apostolic punch for him. <laughs> I know a band with that name. Uh, Water from the Rockers. 12 Angered Men Band. We don't know what we signed up for. That's true. Brad Harris, the 12 Ascenders. Hey, Brad, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Brad Harris, let's see. I think you've been with us before. Remind us what city and state you're in. It's 9 o'clock, people. Hydrate and share all 80 people. All right, the Outcast, 12 Ascenders, Misfits. Instead of Foo Fighters, you <laughs> You deserve a laugh. Okay. No, no, no. Back to... I pushed the... I pushed the wrong button, people. Never got along. Foo Fighters, Jew Fighters. Never got along. Out from obscurity band. Oh. Excuse me. The 12 disciples. <laughs> Die hard. That's good. Band of brothers. Awesome. Rough waters. Good one. Walking on water. <laughs> Ragamuffin gang. Mina Ghali, our real estate man from Orange County. How are you? What's the question? What would be the 12 apostles have called? What would have the 12 apostles have called their music band? If they... You know, if they started a music band, what would they have been called? Ragatag Rockers. Andy, one of the singers from For Him, was our worship pastor. Hmm, he still leads on occasion. All right. The Good Bookers. Naz's Noisemaker. <laughs> the Twelve Conflicts. The Twelve Worshippers Band. Fishnets, <laughs> good, the octave. The a cappella band in one accord, that's good. The 11, right, Sarah? The Sandmen, the old people band. Mega Death Martyrs, that's funny. <laughs> 
Nazareth or bust. <laughs> Let's see. Saved by Grace. That's a good name for a band. Jesus Freaks. That's good, Rochelle. The Rolling Loaves. <laughs> good job. That's good, guys. This is good. Come on. Jesus had 12 disciples. If they started a band, what would they be called? I'm from Kappa Kappa Capra now. <laughs> Kappa Kappa Capra. Cheaper by the dozen. That's good. What would they be called? Let's see. The twelve disciples. They're from the Gal. Oh, the Galileans. <laughs> no, that's normal. Fishing and fishing. Fire and ice rock band. <laughs> Bread, baskets, and fish. The fish wrappers. <laughs> right, Terry. Miracle watchers. Good. Miracle witnesses. Good one. The clean dozen. Smelly. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Crazy Christian crew. <laughs> Sons of Thunder. Good. <laughs> okay, people. If the disciples of Jesus started a, a band, what what would they call themselves? Medical metal. Upheaval. Fish for breakfast. <laughs> Jesus homies, right, the homies, church porch melodies, the sandals, that's funny guys, good job, casting nets, walkers band, <laughs> that's right, they walked a lot, heaven bound, can't touch this, <laughs> the 12 old spice men, <laughs> Uh, the way, right? Love, sons of thunder, Sarah. <laughs> Crazy. Miracle seekers. Okay, what would the twelve apostles have called their music band? Misunderstood band. The ascenders. Not Hillsong. <laughs> Okay, not hell song. No, nope. okay. One of us is a betrayer, fish slashers, rapture group, fish slashers, doubt no more. Fire from heaven. On the Mount <laughs> On the Mount Ben. Holy Water. The Athens. That's true, Holy Water. They can call themselves Holy Water. In the zone. The afterlife band. Tongues of fire. The discerners. Well, we're so happy you're with us, Amy. Emma. You're not working today. That's good. It's raining, people. It is raining outside. Wanderers, the discerners. Buy it afloat, bait afloat, or boat afloat. Makers and shakers, angelic and anglers. <laughs> angelic, angelic anglers. Alrighty. Okay, it is time for Perplexus Band. What the question? Hey, Brent, welcome. Good, we'll give you some moments. What would the 12 apostles have called their music band? 
If they formed a music band, what would they be called? I'm off tonight. That's good, Amy. Glad you are. You need a break. Peter's Players, Crumb Snatchers, Enlightened, Smelly Feet. <laughs> That's true. He had Jesus had to wash their feet. Christ Cant Cantors, <laughs> Peter's Big Mouth. It's funny. Divine Divos. Div the old Beatles. <laughs> Matthew's Minstrels. The the Dugars. The Twelve Atonements. <laughs> Country folks. <laughs> That's true, they were good. They were Galileans, country folks. The village people, that's what they were, right. Village people. Country folks. <laughs> Abandoned Georgian chants. Boys to mench. <laughs> okay. All right, it is time for the Guinness Book of World Record, people. The Guinness Book of World Record. Why is Guinness Book of World Record doesn't have me in there? This is funny. It made me disappear. Where are you, Guinness Book of World Record? So we have to try something else. I'm disappearing, but I'm still here. And this one had me disappear. It's very interesting. So let's do something. Why don't we do this and see if I appear again. Here we go. All right, let's do the Guinness Book of World Record. Guinness Book of World Record. Today is National Things on a Stick Day. Did you know that? Well, Nancy Sir and Mike are still there. How does this happen? Magic. Better Than Crumbs, the old rugged cross band. Judas's Joymakers, they were one hit wonders. Then the lead singer Judas left the group. Oh, thank you for the update. <laughs> Take a bath, see that. <laughs> New Covenant, right. Amy, you disappeared. Yeah, unworthy. Where's Nazareth? Things on a stick day. Sounds Middle Eastern to me. Yeah. Things on a stick. Well, to me, I wasn't thinking of kebabs. I was thinking more of like, you know, you put an ice cream on a stick. You put a hot dog on a stick. You put a something on a stick. Like pop cake. Cake pop. So, speaking of cake pop, the largest cake pop was achieved by Nick... Di Giovanni from and Lynn Davis, Nick Di Giovanni from the U.S. and Lynn Davis from Japan in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in November twenty third, twenty twenty first, which is a few months ago, they made the largest cake pop. Nick and Lynn went with confetti cake for their mega creation, which required five cups of sprinkles. At the time of measurement, the cake pop has a circumference of 150 inches, only 50 inches, and included a 33-inch stick. How much did it weigh? It's over one pound and under 500 pounds. Over one pound, under 500 pounds. How much did this cake pop weigh to make it to the Guinness Book of World Records? One mile, Michael. I've eaten the largest cake pop. <laughs> Bread bites. Not your Caesar's songs. Snake on a stick. Corn dog on a stick. Bread of life. Things on a stick day. Sounds Middle Eastern to me. Donuts on a stick. Salty. Okay, now I'm in trouble. 
Okay, how was, how big was it again? Well, it had a 50 inch circumference and the stick was 33 inches long. The stick was 33 inches long. 213 pounds. Turn your ch turn your cheek band. 135, 235, 335 for Becky Ottenberry. Bedford, Texas. First cousin of Scott Schiffer. All right, Brad. That's awesome. I just had Friday. I had lunch with Scott. That's awesome. Great guy. Okay, I missed the question. The question is how how much did the largest cake pop weigh? Over one pound, under 500 pounds. It's a cake pop. It was on a stick that was 33 inches in size and 50.75 inches in circumference. 143 pounds for Amy. 27.99 and 3.79 for Dolores. Sarah said 55. 50, 75, and 105. Slap cheek. <laughs> 22 pounds, 32 pounds, 17 pounds. Becky Volves said 12, 30, and 45. Rochelle, 175, 275, 375. Come on, people, give me the rooster and Ruby the Red Hen would love some of that cake bar. Of course. Of course, we have our own fowl a rooster who lives next to sarah and his new bride a hen named ruby from oregon and in the last 423 shows we've seen the relation develop between this rooster and this hen to a point that they were got they got married they went to hawaii for vacation and now they're back in washington state so when you hear about Sarah's rooster, actually, that's who we're talking about. It's not Sarah's rooster, but that's how they relate to that rooster. So, Redeemer's Road Band, good. What flavor cake pop? It was confetti flavor. I don't know what that tastes like, but I know janitors hate confetti. The Good Samaritans, I love that. That is good. That's a good name, Michelle. All right, anybody else want to guess how much did this cake pop weigh it to make it to the world, the Guinness Book of World Records? How much did it weigh? Over one pound, under 500 pounds? Give me your three guesses to win this beautiful toilet paper. Come on. We need toilet paper. You need toilet paper. Now that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, the economy, the, we're going to have more inflation. You know, economy is going to be, the interest rate is going to go up because of that night. So get your toilet paper. Redeemer's Road Band. All right, anybody else want to guess? Let's see. Nobody else is guessing? Come on, people. Confetti cake always seems lighter than chocolate. That was a good question. Oh, oh, smart. I'm giving the answer away, am I? Anybody else want to guess? It's 9.15. After we have the last hydrate and share, we're going to go once, twice, and give you the answer. Alrighty. Matthew said 223, 135, and 75. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. And sold. Invisible glass. Yes. All right. Sold. The leather sandal tour. Okay. The answer is the largest cupcake, a cake pop, weighed 97 pounds. And the winner is Dolores was the closest who came up with 99 pounds. So Dolores... Congratulations on winning this beautiful toilet paper. Yes, the largest kick pop weighed 97, almost 100 pounds. Can you imagine? You can't even carry it. 
congrats, Dolores. You are the winner of this beautiful toilet paper. Also, I want to remind you, for tomorrow, we are having comedian Anthony Griffith. Look him up. He's been on many shows, TV shows. He's a very funny comedian, and he's been struggling with MS for several years. And it just uh, it's so good to be able to hear from him and talk about his his career, his life, his walk. He's a, he's a good Christian man. Hello, Lily. You just missed the Guinness Book of World Record. So let's go back to maybe if you have more about the disciples or I can ask you a new question. Let me ask you a new question. Uh, this also came from Chris Rossetti. What was the greatest thing before sliced bread? What was the greatest things before sliced bread? They always tell you, you know, that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. That was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, what was the greatest thing before sliced bread? If since Pop Tart, shoelaces. <laughs> Lily said 59, 115, one in. Oh, Lily, I'll take your numbers, but what's her name? Dolores has won. Okay, so what was the greatest thing before pita bread? That's what we say in the Middle East. No, <laughs> what was the greatest thing before sliced bread? Let's see, Pop-Tarts, Betty White. <laughs> the bag and twist tie, right. Big loaves of delicious carb laid in bread, right? Bill Gaither's hair. <laughs> a loaf of bread, that's right. It wasn't sliced. That's funny, Amy. Bacon, yes, Rochelle, bacon. Pockets in skirts and dresses for the ladies. That's right, they put pockets in skirts. Bacon, soap, yep, I would go with soap. Soap was a great thing. Remember, they used to make soap and then Dove Company, I think Dove, came up with this floating though, you know, so they made it hollow inside. So, because remember, they didn't have showers back then. So when they were in their bath, in the bath, they didn't have to look for the, for the soap bar because it floats. Boom. Just lawn darts, really. Electric lights. That's good. That's true. I would go with honey. Yes. Perfume. <laughs> remember people in the old days in Europe and all that, they only took a bath once a year because water was scarce, scarce and uh, they didn't. It's not. We have luxury. You take a shower every day or a bath. They took baths once a year and it started with the head of the household, then the one lower, then, you know, like the dad, the mom, and then the older kid, the middle. By the time the last kid or the last person took the bath, he would rather not because he would be cleaner before the bath than after with all other people's dirt in it. Imagine oh, an entire year you go without a bath and then you get in the water and all that stuff goes into the water. And the next person, ah, no wonder they didn't live that long. Abraham, Abraham was the greatest thing since sliced bread, before sliced bread. Dinosaurs, okay, churro. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, apples. <laughs> now you're just saying stuff, Michelle. You had great answers in the back. <laughs> Fish in a barrel. Thus the saying, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. So it was so dirty, you could hardly see the baby, right? You mentioned that in your book, Hope in 24 Hours. Thank you, Mark, for reading my book. If you have not read my book, Hope in 24 Hours, I want to encourage you to read it because it really will encourage you. And if you say, I can't afford your book, Nazareth, just message me uh, with your email and I will send you a free PDF copy. Cool? Cool. Because you guys are my community, my family, and I love this. I'm hungry. Cake pops. <laughs> Cake. <laughs> Cake was the best thing. Today is also black forest cake. Black forest cake. Remember that cake with the cherry that came from western, southern Germany? 
And people go, why did they call it the Black Forest? Is it named by the Black Forest in, uh, in Switzerland, Germany, you know, that area? No, it was called the Black Forest Cake because of the liqueur that goes into the cake from the cherry, the cherry liqueur that was called the Black Forest. That's why. I don't know much about that, and I don't care. I just want a slice right now. That's what. I, that's all I'm asking right now. A slice of black forest cake. I'm not a chocolate guy, but black forest. I'm not a chocolate cake guy. I eat chocolate. I mean broccoli all the time. Let's bake one now. Ooh, Debbie makes great cake pops. Okay, yes, patty cakes. I have to come to Louisiana. I'm telling you, that's it. I'm coming to Louisiana. Ness. What would be your speech if you win Oscar? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to go in <laughs> to know after they're attacking comedians. Self-cleaning ovens. Oh, that was after. <laughs> right. Hello, Lily. Cake. I'm hungry. I come in peace. Don't slap me. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh, make it non-alcoholic one. Nazareth, go to Walmart grocery store. Get the new keto bread called Inked with a wolf on it. It's really moist and good bread. Oh, okay. We'll do that. Thank you, Amy. Black Forest cake goes great with with Black Forest ham. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Silk. Uh, that was the best thing before sliced bread. We all need to go to Louisiana. Yes. We'll be here waiting for you. All right. Let's all go to Louisiana. Broccoli pops. Frankincense, <laughs> that was the best thing. That... <laughs> right, frankincense was the best thing before size. Pretzels, mold-free sliced bread. Okay, guys, it is time for the... Let's see, what do you think it's time for? It's time for your prayer request. The Flintstones, right? Please pray for Bobby Miller and his sister. They lost their mom this weekend. Also pray for Timothy Fakhuri. He asked for prayer. Pancho, one, almost missed you all, love you all, and prayer for all. Thank you, Frank. Just in time for prayer requests. Hope your hand is doing better. Pray for, let's see, Sarah has unspoken prayers. Pray for, there's a guy that, a good a friend of mine that used to come on the show works for focus on the family he needs prayer for his son his son been through several surgeries so keep him in prayer uh, uh pray for uh, little ella the the four year old that had leukemia she's doing her last sessions of chemo last ones the whole process last i think last month or so of, of chemo, so keep her in prayer. Oh, it's been a little rough lately. I'm sorry, guys. Bobby, my, yeah, we, we, yeah, I know he told me on Friday, I think, or Saturday morning, and been praying for him and keep him in prayer. More gigs for Nath, thank you. Guys, I'll be going to florida on thursday afternoon so and then i'll be back on saturday so there won't be a show next this coming thursday and friday but remember john's dry bar comedy will come out on this the 31st which would be this thursday so look it up it's on facebook under dry bar and let's see pray for uh lily's the kids that they were able to make beds for at the reservation in Arizona, that they are, you know, they're protected and, you know, and they're enjoying the beds. For all the prayer requests spoken and unspoken, keep Remington. Yes, uh, Matthew's grandson Remington in prayer and unspoken for his family. Like, pray for wisdom for all of us. Pray for wisdom. And you know what? This is inter uh, not interesting. Just want to encourage you a little bit. If you read uh, John 16, 
that John 16, he, the Lord Jesus is telling his disciples, he said, I have to leave because when I leave, the helper, the Holy Spirit, he will come. He's the spirit of truth and he will lead you into all truth and that he will guide us. He's also, he will convict, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. He will convict him of righteousness because Jesus, you know, rose from the dead and also he'll convict us of judgment. He'll convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. And when you look at that, when you read John 16, look how many times the Lord Jesus calls the Holy Spirit. He, a person, the person of the Holy Spirit. He's not a force. He's not a power. He's not a wind. He's a person. And a lot of times it's offensive when you see these people on TV going, <sighs> blowing the Holy Spirit on people and they fall backwards and stuff. That's not the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is a person. And when you pray, you pray not to have more of the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Holy Spirit has more of you. That he has more control of you. He is a person. He has more control. Ask for more control of the Holy Spirit because what happened then, and then you'll have truth. The more you read the Word of God, the more you sit and pray, the Holy Spirit will give you truth. He will not lie to you. He's not going to give you lies. Whatever is told to you, it's truth. So if you want to just, in this foggy world that you live in, that we live in, if you need some guidance, pray that the Holy Spirit will give you guidance, and He will, He promised. Amen, amen. I love you all. Hope to see you tomorrow early at 6.30 to, to, for the podcast with Anthony Griffith, and then at 8.30 for the show. All right? I love you guys. I mean, Jesus himself breathed on his disciples, and they said, receive the Holy Spirit. So I don't, he did, yes, but the Holy Spirit is not a breath. Jesus can breathe that in them like the like he did when he breathed in Adam life in Adam he breathed like he can do that God can do that we can breathe life into people or the Holy Spirit into people Jesus can do that yes he breathed he breathed on them and the Holy Spirit came on them but the holy truly the Holy Spirit came down on them on the day of Pentecost so, it's beyond my understanding, but this is what the Word says. Praying you have a great podcast tomorrow. Hope to see you there. Yes, we need to yield to His leading. He is our helper. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow.